one mic, one voice. You can change the world, it's your choice. One mic, one voice. You can change the world, it's your choice. One mic, one, mic, one voice. You can change the world, it's your choice. One mic, one voice. Welcome to the One Mic, One Voice show, Building the Collective Conscious. Show that's created to give space where your voice, ideas, and informed opinions can be heard, appreciated, and debated. I am Michael Eric Owens, back in the studio once again, folks, dealing with a very difficult, untouchable topic for a lot of people in our country. But we're going to get down to it. We have no excuse We are in a moment where we need truth. (laughs) We need truth and we need clarity. And um, good afternoon, Arthur and Doreen. Pleasure. I appreciate you tuning in. And um, we want to examine this question. Is America a racist country? Now, this past week, uh, Joe Biden, President Biden, uh, did something uh, historic. He sat there or stood there uh, in Congress and gave his his address to the joint session, and he had two women behind him, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, and, of course, the VP, Kamala Harris, which had never happened in history. Women in the seat of power. That's something to celebrate. As much as our country is divided and angry and confused, that was a moment in which we must mark that we um, were blessed enough to witness that. And I hope you were able to to see that historic event and, and, and really a, a great speech um, that I think our country needs. But it was the rebuttal to that that brings us to this discussion, the rebuttal. The, um, by Tim Scott of uh, South Carolina, the only black Republican senator, the only black Republican senator, and during his rebuttal, I mean, he said a lot of things that um, that I thought were uh, rather disturbing. But he said something that stood out, and I think the media jumped right on it, and, and, uh, and I'm sure you've heard it. Tim Scott said, Senator Scott, give him his respect. He is a senator. He said this, let me be clear. This is his quote. Let me be clear. America is not a racist country. Let me be clear. You see, we are in a period of reversal and revision. I don't even know if revision is the right word, but I'm going to play with it a little bit. But reversal, because the Republicans are working hard to set the clock back. And if, you, if you're a student of history, or I should say a student of black history, because you wouldn't necessarily find this sort of information in, um, in the textbooks where our children, our high school, or even on the collegiate level, are necessarily being taught unless they take some sort of, you know, a black history course or something like that. So this is very similar to what happened after the Civil War with Reconstruction when blacks start getting involved in politics and they started holding public office from Justice Peace to representatives to senators. First really black senator took over Jefferson Davison's seat was Harlan Revel. And so we, we, we saw at that time the strides that blacks were making in this country. And then there was this all-out assault to set back the clock. This is, this is nothing new. Matter of fact, it should be expected. You, you've heard me say before in the past 
that when uh, President Obama got elected, I had said to a colleague of mine, a, a white colleague of mine, um, that this would unearth uh, so much racism in this country um, that we had never seen before, this pushback. And I was trying to explain to her in relationship to black progress always comes major pushback on a national level. And so she got very upset with me and, and said, how could I be so, you know, fatalistic in, in, the, fact that, um, in the fact that we were moving into a uh, post-racial society and um and and I kind of chuckled at that I wonder what her view would be right now but there's always whenever there's black progress there's always a national not just a local but a national and it is a state pushback but this always happens and oftentimes the pushback is so great that it 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 just dismantles the progress and that's where we're at right now republicans are dismantling any progress that has been made and we have to be very careful because when you bask in victory you don't see what's going on around you when you broke out the champagne and you're smoking the cigars, you don't really know what's going on around you because you're so engulfed in your victory. And we exhaled, right? We exhaled. Biden got in office. We exhale. Okay. Chauvin get convicted. We exhale. But at the same time, there is tremendous momentum to dismantle even what happened to Derek Chauvin. But the biggest thing, folks, is this. What the Republicans recognized back then in 1877 is what they recognize now in 2021. Okay, and it, it, you, people are going to say, well, it was the Democrats and this, that, and the other thing. That was the Southern Party. It was the Southern Democrats. So we're still talking about the same people. Don't be confused when they say Republicans freed the slaves and all of this. Well, those were Northerners and Easterners. They were not the Southern Democrats. All right. I don't have time to go into the move of, 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 of blacks from the Republican Party to the Democratic Party, but it happened. And so we're talking about the same people. Don't be confused. And what these southern states, if you notice, they're, they're mainly Republican southern states. They have governors that are Republicans, and, and um, they have um, a state house, which is ran by Republicans. And, and we even see that here in Oklahoma with the new anti-abortion laws that, that are being passed being passed and and the the big thing is this voter suppression laws that are popping up what they understand today is what they understood in the past is that we have to prevent black and brown people from voting you 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 have to understand this is not about election security matter of fact they said this is the most secure election in our history. Now get that. The, the, the intelligence agency stated that this is the most secure election in, 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 in our history. But yet, state after state, Republican state after state is passing laws to restrict voting. Under the uh, this this sort of idea that the election was fraudulent, we know a poll came out that says uh, a third of Republicans don't believe J Joe Biden was elected. Um, um, you know, his election was fraudulent; that he was not duly elected. And we, <laughs> this is the narrative. Because the Republicans understand this principle. You can even, I mean, we don't have, we don't have to be a, uh, a genius to understand 
this principle because when you look at even the last, I don't know, what has it been, five elections now that, uh, or even even more, that Republicans have not even come close to winning the popular vote. Not even close. How they have won, they've won the electoral college. But they haven't won the popular vote. And so what they realize is people vote, they lose. It's as simple as that. Now, this is what's so saddening about that, is that that's racism. When you target a group of people, okay, let, let, let me give you the definition of racism. Prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against a person or people on the basis of their membership in a particular racial or ethnic group, typically one that is a minority or marginalized. So here is a target. Well, let's just go back, right? Let's just go back. And uh, when we think about uh, in Atlanta, Fulton County, where 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 the for and, and in Philadelphia, where all of these black areas were challenged by Republicans, is that not targeting a particular group of people? Again, our question today is. Is America a racist country? So I, I, I don't I don't understand like, you know, we 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 clearly can define what it is, but we can't label it. So you have these voter suppression laws, you have these new anti abortion laws. I think one is either passed or, or trying to be passed, it's called the heartbeat. If there's a heartbeat at six weeks, a woman has lost her her right to choose. I'm not for abortion at all, but I'm for a woman's right to choose, a woman to have the decisions over her own body, just like I have decisions over mine. No state or 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 federal government should tell a woman what to do with her body. That's between her, her family, and her God. That's where it stays. So, then we got these new laws that are coming against trans in, in the gay community. Because any time you make progress and you begin to bring about some level of change, they know where this ends up at. They lose. They, 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 they lose the power. They lose the control. They lose it all. That's why companies are, are are comfortable with having one minority person and say they have diversity. Because if they bring in a majority of black people, or black and brown people, what happens? Things change. Things change. So what the system now is doing is just tweaking itself. It's trying to get back to center. Because what has happened lately it's it's not centered. It's it's moving in a direction that those who are in power um, don't want to see. So it is a reversal, and we are in the moment of these things happening. And if we don't pay close attention and to rally against this, all the gains will be lost. All the gains will be lost. Last week, I talked about the George Floyd uh, policing bill that um, Tim Scott is negotiating with the Democrats. Now, let me say this about black people. I'm going to speak because I'm black. And again, uh, if I offend you, I'm sorry. But I got to speak the truth from my point of view. And and listen, um, just because someone is skin folk don't mean they kin folk. Let me translate that better. Just because they are uh, of a black race doesn't mean that they're living a black life. It doesn't mean that they're in touch with their own history. It doesn't mean that they have nurtured and, and, and grown their blackness. You see, being black is not simply 
a skin color because we're not really black at all. We're brown and tan. And, but black is a concept. Black is not a color. It has no hue. It's a concept. It, 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 it is a culture. It is a movement. It is say I'm loud, I'm black, and I'm proud. It's a way of looking at oneself, one's beauty, one's talent, one's ability, one's contributions, one's value, not just to the culture but to the world. Right, the world is black. I don't care what anybody say. Look around the world. You got folks in the Middle East bumping hip hop, pan sagging. You, 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 listen, folks. The you know they say when the when the Romans conquered Greece, they said Greece conquered them culturally. That's what has happened in America. American culture is black culture. There is no white culture. They come from all different types of places with with different cultures and and, and the idea of the creation of whiteness, there is no authentic culture. So what they do, they appropriate from other cultures and the one they have appropriated from is the one they enslaved. Rest on that for a moment. So this reversal, we got to undo this. We can't give them that sort of power, that sort of inclusion. We can listen to their music. Yeah, we can listen to their music. We can can even listen to this. We can even be entertained by them. Oh, man, I love the Thunder. I love the uh, the Lakers, I love the, oh, yeah, we can, we, we can embrace OU. We can do all of that, but guess what? You can't get equality. You can't e- get equal opportunity. You can't sit in the seat of power, but you can entertain us, though. This reversal of progress being, being made by black and brown people is nothing new. And we, this is, as I said I think a couple shows before, this is no time for celebration. If we, are celebra- if we are celebrating, we are missing the point that these folks are plotting to undo what little progress has been made. Fighting to suppress. So, there's this reversal, and then there's this revisionist. And I don't even know. You know, when you're revisionist, you're rewriting history. History hasn't really truly been written in a way that it coalesces together in elementary, in high school, in middle school, and in college, and so forth. So maybe I'm a little off, but I'm going to stay with that. So fighting to suppress the truth of America's past. That's revisionist. Take, for instance, McConnell, 1619 Project. Here is the senator from Kentucky, the senator um, that was the majority leader in the Senate, sends a letter to the um, education secretary saying that He does not want any federal grant money going to the 1619 Project. Now you say, what is the 1619 Project? That's the truth of the origin of this country. It's the truth of the transatlantic slave trade. It's the truth of of how this country came to be. The free labor the oppression, the truth. He doesn't want the truth to be taught. Oklahoma, ban teaching on critical race theory. I, this, 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 <laughs> oh man, I, I'm going to tell you like this. Frederick Douglass said, once I learned to read, I became free. They want to keep the information from us, from our babies, from these students. Why? Why? Why would you not want that taught? Because the truth of that changes everything. 
it changes everything. You see, again, is America a racist country? For most Americans, this is a difficult question to answer. It's a very difficult question to answer. For most politicians, it's a question they refuse to answer honestly. They would normally say something like, uh, no. For Republicans, they will say simply no. But the Democrats will say no, but they use a qualifier. But we have systemic racism. Okay. My car won't run. Right? And I say it's the, it's the engine. Now, the car still won't run, regardless of whether it's the engine or whether it's the, it's the, you know, the injectors are not working right or, you know, head gaskets leaking or the b- bottom line, the car won't run. America was based upon racism. When you come and you take a country and you call people barbarians and you script them of their language in their culture because you think your language and culture is superior, when you take them from their parents and put them to Indian, Indian schools, you have them dress Western dress because you believe your culture is better. That's racism. It's the very definition of racism, a superiority complex. So from the outset, what motivated these folks who came was they thought they were better. The city on the hill, the beacon of democracy, all of the platitudes that we use, we say we are better. You see, it's okay to be different. It's okay to be unique. It's not okay to think you are better. Because no matter how much money you have, how talented you are, how, how, how popular you are, or how smart you might think you are, you might be all of those things, but you're not better. We're all born of a woman. What person on the face of the earth from, 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 from the beginning to now were born any different? We all breathe the same air. We all, when, 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 if I need a blood transfusion, it doesn't matter if it's, if I need A, it doesn't matter whether it's come from a black person, a white person, an Asian person. Be, Want to know why? Because we are the same. But these lies, though, these lies, it is difficult to answer the question because of these lies. The American lies that America is the land of the free, the just, the fair, and that every American citizen, regardless of race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, has the same rights, privileges, and protections as any other citizens. You and I both know that is a lie. But in order to maintain the lies, you have to give a false narrative. You can't teach slavery. You can't teach Japanese internment camps. You can't teach, listen, folks, convict leasing, Jim Crow segregation the Tulsa Race Massacre. You can't teach that because if you teach true American history, then you dispel the lies. People begin to question. They begin to question. How is it just? How is it fair? What about sexism? What about we're a country 
with freedom of religion, but we demonize our Muslim brothers and sisters, our Sikh brothers and sisters. You see, when you begin to tell the truth, um, well, it is Sunday. The good book says it'll set you free. That's what Jesus said, the truth. But this bondage in which we live, the lies, the it's 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 engulfed us, it's it's choking us to death. And those of us who know the truth, we're gagging. We're gagging. But then there was George Floyd. Yeah. George Floyd opened up the eyes of a lot of our white brothers and sisters. To the, what we already know, what we have been saying now for generations. But see, you if you say America is a racist country where people say, well, you, he hate America. Mike hates America. How can I say that about America? Because America is such a, such a loving and beautiful and welcoming country. That's a lie. Just look at the border. We just had a man in the Oval Office for four years that talked about building a wall, keeping people out, as he say, he called them, he called them criminals, rapists. That wasn't racist. Okay, so if, 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 if the head is bad, is the body good? The head of this country he turned the, the, the Oval Office into a space of racism. But we can't simply answer the question now. Some would say, now hold up, Mike. That's a deviation. We get into that argument, we lose people. Okay. How has that worked? How has that worked? How is not talking about it, not addressing it, not embracing it? How has that worked for black and brown people? It is time for people of courage to stand up and say, yes, we live in a racist country. Now, does it mean that everyone in America is racist? Of course not. That would be foolish to state that. But do we have a segment of our country that has always been? That's the key. Not has been created, but has always been racist. Yes. And we have a system. And this is what people need to understand. When you come in and you take land from a people, you establish a system, you enslave people, the systems themselves reinforce that sort of hierarchy. So when we say systemic racism, it's because the system was based upon the, 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 the circumstances at that time. And the system was based to keep those circumstances at that time. That's why it's taken so, that's why it took a civil war. That's why it took reconstruction. That's why it took a civil rights movement. That's why it took countless legislation to change the system. But the system has not been completely changed. Some things have been changed. Some things have, 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 have been codified differently, but you still have that sort of sense, that sort of, uh, of, of, of understanding and narrative in America that is rooted, this white supremacy that is rooted in the very DNA. And that's where the fight is today. The fight against taking down statues was what? It's a fight to retain that narrative. The voting suppression, what what is that for? So that they can retain power. 2022 is coming up. They want to win back the House, and they want to win the Senate. 
That's what this is all about. Turning back the clock. Mm. These are the lies we refuse to call out. However, these lies have now been seen by the entire world. You know, that's probably that's probably one of the things that's the most saddened to me is that from a world standing, America has fallen. America had a sort of reputation around the world. Yeah, sort of people believe that narrative, whether it was true or not, they believe this. And now, aren't we just like anybody else? Aren't we just like any other country struggling with deep-seated racism? Deep-seated um, division? How can we be critical of the Middle East? How can we be critical of Russia? when it comes to Crimea or or China, when it comes to Taiwan, how can we be critical when our own house is corrupted? Again, it is Sunday morning. Remove the plank from your own eye before you start talking about the plank in your brother's eye. This is a critical moment for us. A critical moment, folks. Hey, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come back and we're gonna finish this thing up. Hang in there. This is Michael Eric Owens, host of the One Mic, One Voice show. I want to give a shout out to all of our listeners all across the globe. Thank you for your undivided attention and for your conversation. You can catch us every Sunday on YouTube, 1230 p.m. Central Standard Time. And you can also catch us on Podbeam, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, on any one of those lovely, wonderful podcasting platforms you love to listen to. Please always remember, you can change the world. It's your choice. Is America a racist country. Doreen said that is correct. The whole world is watching. It is. We're center stage. Center stage. But the acting is not very good. (laughs) Yeah, you can tell. It's not real. You can tell all of the Lies. All of the promises have been broken. Because we still fight today to ensure what King said you gave us a blank check that came back with insufficient funds. Yeah, these are serious moments, and it requires serious people to solve these serious problems. We are called, we have called ourselves a beacon of democracy, yet we have a system where not every vote counts equally. We have an electoral college where they decide the president where peaceful protest for racial justice is met with state and federal sanctioned violence. See the difference. 
See the difference when BLM goes versus these other groups where a white insurrection is viewed as patriotic. This is really revisionist when you have people, politicians, rewriting what happened on January 6th. This, this, this desperation, they are desperate to keep us from taking our rightful place in this society. They are fearful. So they continue to do what they do. You see, we are drowning in these historical lies. Until we have leaders. I mean, I can call them out all the day long and and who cares? You know, I'm just a voice in the wilderness. Who cares? They asked the vice, the vice president, is America a racist country? She said no. She said, but the system, systemic racism, needs to be dealt with. What's the difference? The difference is, again, going back to what I said, if you say America is a racist country, you're canceled. They're going to run that forever. Because they understand that most Americans do not have what I would call any type of intellectual depth. They're shallow in their thinking. They're simple-minded. They can't critically think about not just today, but history. And so when, 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 when you take a stance and you say America is a racist country, that requires defining what that means. But they will just take that and run with it. And I understand why she did what she did. But I'm waiting on people. I'm just going to tell you something. I'm waiting on people with courage. Because let me say this. Saying no and qualifying it, where has that got us? So, well, now you're going to alienate the very same people that we need to be compromising with. Where has that got us? They said, well, hey, President Biden, you need to compromise now. Barack did that. Where did that get us? We need some truth sayers today. We need people that will stand up regardless of the political cost and tell the truth and fight for what is right. Until we call out these lies and find a consensus on the atrocities of American history, this country will never change. We need to talk about this. As ugly and painful and difficult as it is, it needs to be addressed. Let me tell you what will happen if we do. Okay. Just just say we had the courage. <laughs> as a people, as a nation, to, to really come out and say, listen, yes, America has not lived up to its promises. Yes, we built this country on the backs of African peoples. Yes, we did the Native American population wrong. We murdered them. We broke every treaty we made with them. Yes, we have treated immigrants, non-white immigrants, as if they were less than human. Yes, we've done that. Even the blacks that went to fight for war, to fight for this country, when they came back, we rejected them. We targeted them. Simply because of the color of their skin, we pulled them over, we beat them, we murdered them. This is what we are guilty of. But we're better than that. You see, there is no forgiveness without confession. You, first of all, you got to acknowledge that this happened. 
that there was an injustice. If America wants to live up to this beacon of democracy where this land where everyone, every citizen is treated fairly, equally protected by the law. If you want to live up to that, you have to deal with your past. It's very uncomfortable, painful, ugly, brutal. Yeah. America needs to weep. Yeah. Matter of fact, we need a week, a national week of reconciliation to just acknowledge what we have done. From the federal government to the state houses, all the way down to our local communities. We need to acknowledge the truth of our history. By doing that, we will break the stranglehold of this learned racism on our children. Our children are still being indoctrinated. Nobody comes out the womb hating or despising someone because of their race, sexual orientation, their gender. None of that. That is taught. You say you want to change America? Got to start with our children. They have to know the truth. Many of the adults, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth the effort. They're so stuck in their ways and stuck in their silos and and, and their whole identity is based upon this lie that if they embrace the truth, who are they? If they have believed all their life that they're better than me or they're entitled to, 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 to the, the, the fruits of this country and I'm not, when all that changes, who are they? So adults, I don't, I don't you know, criticize me if you want to, but our children, our children need to be taught correctly. If, if we would embrace our racist reality, we would acknowledge the contributions and values brought by all citizens. The contributions and values of all our citizens. Because that has not been the case. The contributions of black and brown people have been relegated to the, what, the margins of our society. If we would embrace our racist reality, we would open the door to real and honest but painful dialogue, which leads to healing and transformation. Y'all need to embrace this word transformation. It's not about conforming. It's not about reforming. It's about transforming. And it's the, I give you the analogy from the caterpillar to the butterfly. It's a transformation is what we need in America, not to reform a system. It needs to be transformed. We need America. You heard me say this. We need America that we have not seen yet. An America that we have only dreamed of. Matter of fact, an America that those black soldiers fought for. They weren't fighting for the existing America. They were fighting for an America that did not exist yet. If we would embrace our racist reality, we would have the opportunity to live up to our founding documents. It's all there. That's what's so funny about all of this. It's all there. It's written down. I'm not making this up. It said that if I was a citizen, that's what it said. If I was a citizen, I would be protected. If I was a citizen, I would have freedom of speech and expression. If I was a citizen, I would have due process. Brother George didn't have due process. Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, Sandra Bland. 
Let's go on and on. If I'm a citizen, this is what you told me. If we would embrace our racist reality, we could begin to move toward those ideas. And finally, we would have a chance at moving up towards a more just and inclusive society. You see, I said a chance, a chance. We have never done this before. The problems we are trying to solve in America have never been solved before. There's been great attempts. There's been great organizations, great marches and protests, great legislation passed. But our problems are still here. The same problems. A hundred years ago, 200 years ago. We have the same problems. Well, you say, well, come on, Mike, you can drink at any fountain you want. Okay. Depending on where I'm at. Some of these towns I can't even pull over to get gas in. Hmm? Well, Mike, you can say really what you want to say. Well, right now I'm on Facebook restriction. (laughs) Because something I posted. So see, what I'm saying to you is we, we need a chance. And if we really want to have a chance, we have to acknowledge, yes, America is a racist country, but it doesn't have to be. America can be all those things that she has desired to be. All of the aspiration, the dream, the all of the fairy tale can be somewhat of a reality. If only we had the courage to acknowledge our race's past. And understand that even today, that racism runs deep and thick. So what do we do? We have this conversation. We don't run away from it. And if we're going to get canceled for having a conversation, so be it. Because what I'm going to say to you today is that whatever one has as a personal loss and furthering this conversation does not compare does not compare to the suffering and the loss and the oppression of black and brown people in this country the story is bigger than us yes America is a racist country, but it does not have to be. For history will speak of us. Somewhere in the distant future, a scribe will reach down deep into the archives of our time. And what will she find? Will she discover that we overcame our differences? Will she find out out of many we became one? Or will she find that we solve nothing and remain a divided peoples? Yes, history will speak of us. We can make a difference if we try. We can be the change that's in our life. All we gotta do is work together. We gotta raise our children better. We gotta stop the hate, stop the hate, and spread the love. One mic, one voice, you can change the world, it's your choice. One mic, one voice, you can change the world, it's your choice. One mic, one voice, you can change the world, it's your choice. One mic, one voice. 
can change the world, it's your choice. Your choice. Thank you for downloading the One Mic, One Voice show. Take a moment and subscribe and share. You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, or any other podcasting platform. Thank you for your continued support and for your voice. You can change the world. It's your choice. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on the One Mic, One Voice show are not the views, thoughts, and opinions of our sponsors.